A PIP is a performance improvement plan. PIPs are a formal document to tell the employee about recurring performance issues, basically to tell the employee that they're not doing well. They're not meeting expectations for their level. I've been a software engineer and a manager at Meta for four and a half years before I left back in January, and I also run a 15,000 person community called Tech Career Growth. So I have a pretty good understanding of how PIPs work, especially at these large tech companies. In this video, I'll talk about what it means to be on a PIP and why the vast majority of people who end up on a PIP leave the company and why I think that's actually a good thing. If you get pipped, you'll usually have a formal meeting with HR and your manager and you'll get a document outlining the areas where your performance is lacking and you'll have several goals you need to achieve in order to graduate from the PIP, which basically means that you're no longer in danger of getting fired or let go for performance reasons. There's no getting around the fact that getting a PIP is very, very unpleasant. Your manager is spending hours basically documenting places where your performance has been lacking, at least from their perception. And that can include quotes from different people on your team. It could include your code or code review where things didn't go according to plan or communication, emails or messages, which led to a bad outcome. In most cases, the people who get on a PIP usually end up leaving the company either on their own or they get fired. And I think that's, for the most part, the correct thing that should happen if you do end up getting pipped. At Meta, there were always a couple kind of rare stories of people who rebounded and found success on their team or went on to do well at the company, but those are really in the minority. They, they were the exception, not the norm. The biggest reason why a pip is not worth fighting is because you want to work for people who support you. I think that's so important for career success. You want to have someone or something which is purely on your side, on your team whether that's a mentor, a manager, or even an app. I'm building this app called Taro, which is packaging up the best career advice that you can apply to your software engineering job. You need to have that support behind you. And very, very often, a PIP doesn't feel like it's anyone that's actually really supporting you. By definition, a PIP is a formal tool employed by the company, employed by the manager, to basically construct an argument about why you are lacking, why you are not meeting the expectations for your job. And your manager is literally spending hours crafting that argument, pulling in all this data, all this evidence around why you are not doing a good job. And of course, that can feel like you're not being supported. And so when your manager is presenting all this information to you, and especially doing it in kind of a legal manner, in like corporate speak, you want to remove yourself from that situation. Most tech companies, when you're on a PIP, you don't have the opportunity to switch teams. And so that's why for the vast majority of people, the right course of action is to leave the company. Even if you think your manager is supportive, there's another major issue around the perception created by you being on a PIP, whether that's fair or not. If your teammates, if your coworkers find out that you're on a PIP, that can really change your relationship with them because now your longevity at the company or at least at the team is in question. Why would I want to work with someone who there's a very good chance that within three or four months, you're no longer going to be on the team. And even if your team is supportive, your manager is supportive, there is still this kind of black cloud of unknown of what will happen in terms of your long-term prospects of the company, right? If you end up wanting to switch roles or become a manager, people might hold this pip, this kind of black mark on your performance review against you in some unknown way later on. The tricky thing is that the company or manager may claim that the pip is designed to help you. Your performance hasn't been that good and this is a way for you to get back on track and become productive and happy again on the team. But usually this is almost always a lie, this is completely false. You know, one heuristic you can use is that if HR is getting involved, that's almost never a good thing. The job of human resources is to protect the company, not to protect you. A HR person will pretty much never have your best interest at heart. They will be worried more about how can we protect the downside or how can we limit the downside from the company, right? And so anytime you have, you know, formal meetings or, you know, instructions or warnings from HR, something you should be careful about. There are primarily two things the company cares about in this process, and the PIP is designed to help the company achieve those two things. Number one, the company wants to remove low performers. Typically at a big tech company, the vast majority of impact is driven by these top 20% of engineers. And the thing those engineers hate the most is being dragged down or having to deal with low performers. And so it's a big priority for every manager to try and manage out or remove the low performers. And so that's where a PIP is really a good way to try and force people out or push people out. And secondly, the company wants to do that, remove the low performers in a way such that they're not getting sued. They don't want to have to deal with any of the drama or, or lawsuits of a unlawful termination for whatever reason uh, that might that might be. And so a PIP is a really formal way to say hey, over the past year we have a, or past six months, we have a very clear documentation of this 
employee not meeting the bar and therefore we're justified in letting them go. And perhaps as a distant, distant third priority, the PIP might be genuinely used to help the employee improve their performance. But by and large, the company doesn't want to invest time or energy from anyone, the manager or other teammates, to help an employee improve their performance. And so the PIP really is not designed to help you. It's designed to help the company and help keep the other people at the team happy. Finally, the last reason why I think if you're on a PIP, you should leave the company is for your own personal mental well-being. From the people I've talked to on a PIP, it's extremely, extremely difficult. It's emotionally very taxing to be on a PIP. You can kind of think of it like being on an extended interview, right? You have just one, two, three month period, which is very high pressure, a lot of anxiety, and frankly, a lot of judgment from your manager, the HR person, the people around you. Um, but it's actually even worse than an interview, right? In, in an interview, you're coming in fresh, like you're starting at zero. But for a PIP, you're actually starting from negative, right? So you already have this negative perception of you on, on the team. And you have to not only overcome that, but you have to actually impress people enough that they want to keep you in the company. And so it can be very draining and very taxing. And for most people, the much easier path is, if possible, just go get another job. But if you are on a PIP and you're on this team, how can you now optimize the remaining time at the company to actually get some benefit out of it? So I have three different suggestions here. First is to do some introspection. From the people I've talked to who have been on a pit before, the harsh reality is that it's not entirely their fault. They're, they were put into a situation, they had too much scope, their manager wasn't supportive. That's what led to the lack of performance or the perceived lack of performance on the employee's part. But it's, I think it's also worth acknowledging that you did probably have a hand in that perception being created, right? It's always worth asking the question, what could I have done differently to avoid this outcome? What role did I have in the situation I'm in? Not just for being in a PIP, but just in life. As an engineer, what role did you have in the situation that was created? Usually a PIP is a symptom of an uh, underlying issue that you can then correct a remedy going forward. So it could be something like, okay, I need to make sure I scope things out more. I need to make sure I communicate better. I need to have a better understanding of the system. Maybe it could be a motivation issue. Like what caused that lack of motivation? Um, and so really doing some introspection and being honest with yourself about what happened and what went wrong, what went well, that can really help you avoid this anxiety and this issue in your next job. These topics are important whether or not you're on a PIP, and it's literally the whole point of the company I'm building called Taro. So join Taro.com, I'll leave a link for that in the description, but we exactly cover topics like motivation or working with the manager or promotion. So I think there's a lot of stuff that can help many engineers, regardless of whether you feel like you're getting supported by your manager or not. The second thing I recommend if you're on a PIP right now at your company is to understand severance. So especially if you're at a big tech company, most of these companies give you a soft landing of sorts, even if you're on a PIP and leaving the company. So the ask about things like how many weeks of pay do you get, health insurance, um, and some managers will even help you figure out a company or a team which is a better fit externally. The third tip I have if you're on a PIP currently on your team is to understand regrettable versus non-regrettable attrition. So typically at most tech companies, when someone leaves, they will actually add this flag on that employee profile. Regrettable means that we are sad to have this person leave. We would love to hire them back. And non-regrettable means that we don't really want them back. It's okay that they left. If you're on a PIP, you will get the non-regrettable attrition flag, which means that it will, in the short term, be harder for you to come back to the company. The company won't want to hire you back, right? Kind of makes sense. Before you leave, just have clarity from your manager and the HR team. What exactly does that mean? Because usually there's a, there's a cool down period. Like maybe there's going to be a year or two where you're not able to apply to the company again, but it's worth understanding that just so you can make an informed decision later on in your career if you do want to come back to the company. That's all I had in terms of my thoughts on PIPs. Hopefully the video is helpful to demystify some of how the company views PIPs and what you should do if you are on a PIP. If you are on one, I know it can be really difficult, a lot of anxiety to work through that, but just know that there are a ton of opportunities out there. If you do some introspection, figure out what went wrong and, and how you can improve, there are bigger and better things out there waiting for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.